of absolutely any precision equipment, obviously it's going to cost a substantial amount of money to get there. Um, but if they are utilizing some form of the precision equipment, then, you know, it's, uh, if they don't use it very much, it's, it, you, you have to approach this with baby steps, you know, one, one thing at a time, you know, not many farmers want to jump all in on, on something like this. They want to kind of feel it out and see how it works. So you may, you may use the combine one time for production and, and, and then the next year maybe use, use a planter or maybe their planter is not capable of doing precision equipment. So it's just kind of, it's just kind of one of those things that you kind of just feel the, feel the producer out, see which direction they're wanting to go and then just educate them and say, Hey, we can do this or we can do that. And if you want to do this, then it's going to cost you X amount of dollars to go to do it. Okay. Now, is it a one size fits all type of approach? of what you're doing for the precision technology? Or is there a spectrum of, uh, hey, you need this, so I'm gonna help you like this? I'd say it's a combination. Um, the end result is a one size fits all, but how you get there is not, you know, so you may have some growers that, that uh, you know, they have, to, number one, they have to have the equipment that's capable of doing the precision. And number two, they have to have the precision equipment in the equipment. So if they, if they have a combine that's capable of it and they have the, the stuff for that, then we can use that. Maybe they don't have a planner that's capable of, of recording the information that we're required to report to RMA. So it's, it's, the end result is a one size fits all, but getting there is, may take many different paths to get there. Okay. Um, let's do a battery change on this one. Okay. Don't move there, Chad. Don't move, all right. What's your record though? There you go. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Trey. Oh, thanks for Jeez. Oh, Trey. <laughs> Listen to the precision good. guy. He's like, I'm pretty oh. sure there's supposed to be a red button on there. <laughs> <laughs> now, you good, Trey? Yeah. All right. Uh, have you had one of your farmers go through an audit process before? I have. Yeah. Can you talk about that and how that went? So we've had, uh, I've had a couple of them actually go through it, both on the uh, non-precision side and the precision side. And uh, the, the, the grower that used the precision was, was a lot smoother uh, audit than the one that, that went through the standard, the standard audit with the uh, paperwork from FSA and the assembly sheets and things like that. Uh, just, uh, and maybe it's because I understand it better and you can, and you know what information they need and you can just send it to them and, and it, it just worked out a heck of a real, real smoothly. Now, when you say smoothly, like, did it go faster? Was the farmer much more involved in the tr old traditional way? No, I would say smoothly would be uh, just, you know, when you're doing these audits, I think the, uh, the auditors have a handful of audits to do, so they're, they're maybe switching back and forth between them. You know, if they need some information from, from one grower, then, then they'll work on another one while they're waiting to get that information. Um, once we sent them the information from the precision side and uh, had it sorted out the way it needed to be sorted out, there was no questions, no anything. It just it went very smoothly. Whereas with the other paperwork, there's a lot more different entities involved there, so you may have questions or you may not uh, have the information that you need, and so then you get uh, calls from them to get the information for them. Great. Now. Uh, <clears throat> During the harvest, uh, how do you uh, get all the information uh, for uh, uh, with all the precision technology? So a majority of it is is stored on the displays in the in the combine, whether it be on a on a disk drive or on a on a thumb drive. So you just you go out to the client's place and you gather that information from the displays and upload it into uh, 
to my computer so I have a copy of it. And then from there I, I uh, use a desktop software to analyze the data and make sure everything looks good and accurate. And from there then we do the production report. Uh, before we get to the production report, now how much easier is the collection process uh, with the precision uh, technology and all the data on the monitors as opposed to the traditional way? Well, it's, it's, uh, it's quite a bit easier. You just gra grab a thumb drive or grab it off a disk. Um, also, the other way is okay too if the, if the clients have everything in order when you get there, but most of the time um, they don't have everything together. So that takes time to go through all the tickets and everything and make sure they're in the right, the right fields and things like that. But uh, it's, it's, way, it's, it's just way uh, more convenient to just go grab it off a thumb drive and then stick it in the desktop software and analyze it. So that's saving the customer quite a bit of time because you don't need to sit there and go through old stuff right. tickets and everything. Right. So basically, you know, they don't even have to be there. They can just call them up and they can say, yeah, there's a, the combine's in the shed, just come and get it, and then you go get it, and it probably takes you probably maybe 45 minutes to an hour to analyze it on the desktop software, and then it's ready to be printed for a hard copy for the client if he wants one or, or anything like that. So, And there's a lot of information that you can gather off that. It's not just the yield. I mean, you can do uh, variety comparisons, you can do moisture comparisons. All that data is on the thumb drive, so you can... S you can print out hard copies and leave them with the grower so now he can make management decisions for the following year on what variety that he may, may or may not want to plant. Mm -hmm. Great. And now do you go over that information with them and like, kind of help them and coax them through uh, all the different data you're giving them? I do. Um, I kind of show them what I have and explain to them how it's laid out in a, in a map book. Uh, and then I also uh, offer them the choice if there's something specific that they want to see. Uh, maybe we can do it on the desktop software and get a specific example of what they want. Maybe they want to see, um, you know, population versus yield on this particular field. We can do all that kind of stuff. So um, there's just multiple, multiple things that you can get from the data, not just the yield and the acres. So your map books and all your different reports that you provide to the farmer are not a one size fit all, that you are tailoring it to each individual customer. Exactly. Exactly, because one grower may be all in on precision and enter a lot of different information into the monitor and want to see a bunch of different reports, where the next guy may not have a planter that's capable of it and he just wants to see his yield data. So yeah, they're, they're, they're tailor-made to the, to the customer as to whatever they want to see. Perfect. Run back and hit that. Um, so how you've now given uh, the farmer all this information why do they need that information to make good decisions? Uh, how is this, all this information that you're providing them a good thing for them? Well, so going forward for the following year, um, they have actual proof of how the crops produce that year. So if they have a certain brand or a certain variety that did not produce very well, when they go to buy seed for the following year, they're probably not going to buy that particular seed. Or if the moisture of the corn was a lot wetter of a certain variety than another one, they may not plant that one again. Um, or they'll take a hard look at it and see, okay, do I really want to put up with this the following year? Instead of just having the seed guys come out and say, hey, this is the best variety ever, this is what you need to plant, they have proof on, the, on record saying that no, this here was, was a little wetter. This didn't yield as good as this other stuff. So it's just to make better decisions on a profit loss, profit and loss margin for the grower. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, let's uh, hit that again, uh, the profit and loss margin of that. Uh, really get that, uh, drill down into that. How the, that technology makes it, them able to make the profit loss decision. Well, it'll, it'll tell you what the yield is across the field. So, and if you have different varieties planted on that field, it will show you uh, maybe not necessarily, how do I want to say this? I'm, I'm not working with anybody currently on as far as a profit loss per acre, but we do have programs that we're developing to tell you if this acre was profitable or not. If we can get that information from the grower and put it all into the, into the desktop software, it'll tell you if that acre was profitable or not. 
Uh, we also have spreadsheets, profit loss spreadsheets that we share with the growers so they can enter in all the information, all their expenses and all their, all their uh, income and, and things like that in there to see if they, you know, where their break even is. Uh, but yeah, this software, the desktop software is perfectly capable of doing it if you have the information to put in there. I think we're missing a glaring thing. Any, any questions that we need to be hitting? I don't think so. Uh, the one that I was thinking of all the time was the customizable map books, mm -hmm. like we talked about, right. uh, like Jimmy brought up mm -hmm. before, and we said Chad would be the, and, but yep. he hit that. Yeah. So yeah. Um, that's the, Jimmy, you. Jimmy, you listen? listening? That's the yeah, biggest. I think, I think, I think that was the biggest thing I thought yeah. of. Yeah. Cool. Um, I will then, I, I think we're good. I, I think we've hit everything. Okay. Is there anything else that, like, a big part of your job, a big benefit that you provide to people uh, that we haven't talked about yet? I guess I don't think so. The biggest thing is is just is just uh, you know picking up the phone and answering the phone. You never know what that phone call is going to entail. Sometimes during the season it's very very quiet. Other times you're four or five calls behind. So, um, you know, we try to do our best to provide the best service to our customers. If things get a little bit busy in the springtime, we have Adam to rely on that can, re you know, take some phone calls. A lot of my clients have his phone number in case they can't get a hold of me if I'm busy or whatever. So that's, that's about all I got mm -hmm. to oh, add here, to that. Here's one question I've been asking, uh, that if you don't know an answer uh, to something, do you just give up or what do you do? So, yeah, so that's a great question. Um, a long time ago in sales, I, I learned you never, you never burn a bridge. And so, and you're, you're only as good as the people that you're surrounded by. So you want to surround yourself with good people. And uh, most of the time, you can get to the right person to get, to get the answer that the customer is asking, whether it be you know, the back to the direct thing with PRM that you can go right to an adjuster, you can go right to the underwriters, or your relationships that you've you've kept up at a at a dealership or with FSA or you know, just anything. You just you try to keep your resources close because you never know when you might need them. Great. So I, I think we're all good then. And unless no one, Perfect. Anyone else has any questions? Cool. Perfect. Right. Perfect. Perfect.